Nature is a rhapsody in white when winter comes to northern New England. It snows, it blows, and everything is blanketed in white magic. Button up your overcoat and put on your ear tabs, and we'll look around at a buttoned up New Hampshire countryside where the zero hour is all day long. Snug villages and snug farmhouses dot the landscape. And where there's life, there's chores. A busy lot, these Yankees. Milk must be sent to the city and logs are cut and drawn. For years, these folks enjoyed their vigorous, healthy winter all to themselves. But something has happened. It's been rediscovered by the city folks as a land of snow fun. Trains puff their noses into every valley and corner of New England, bringing skiers to nature's winter wonderland. Modern lodges have replaced farmhouses, and the enthusiastic supporters of the sport on the flying hickories are legion. A few years ago, a novelty, today skiing is a boom sport from coast to coast. The big rush to skiing was helped by ski tows, ski trains, and winter carnivals. But it gathered real momentum when thousands realized that here was a sport not foreign, but typically American in temperament. It's thrilling, exciting, and as strenuous as you choose to make it. Always played against a backdrop of nature's wonderland. Like golf, the novice needs fundamental instruction. You just don't go out and speed down the countryside until you get used to what you're riding on. But once you learn, the winter world in all its glory is under your feet. Hans Thorner of Franconia fame is our selection of a perfectionist to demonstrate the melody of open slope skiing. When light powdered snow covers a good base, conditions are right for cross-country sport. Modern ski technique was introduced in America largely by Swiss and Austrian-American instructors. The Norwegians excelled in the jumping, but the boys from the Alps perfected the thrill and joy of open slope and downhill skiing. A leap like this through the poles is called the Galandersprung, meaning a terrain jump. The side jump is made to change your direction in the air. Of course, for the big thrill of skiing, you've got to get on a big hill. In other words, the top of a mountain is the place to start your downhill run. In all the beautiful White Mountain region, there are no finer, faster, or more beautiful trails than those that start from the summit of Cannon Mountain. You get up there on the famous aerial tramway, which is over a mile long and ascends over 2,000 feet in eight minutes. The ride up is one of majestic white beauty as you climb in the suspended cable car. As you go up, the temperature goes down. Yes, a difference sometimes of 30 degrees from base to summit, which makes for fine and lasting snow conditions. Up and up with the valleys below lined with firs and hemlock frosted with snow feathers. The bright winter sun casts a moving shadow of the car on the treetops. At the summit, the elevation is over 4,000 feet, and here the ski lover can find perfect snow conditions from November to April, and here, Nature's snow portraits are dazzling in their beauty. Hans Thorne.
Fauna glides silently along, headed for the starting mark of one of Cannon Mountain's daring and precipitous speedways. After adjusting his goggles, he slides his skis back and forth to keep them from freezing to the snow, which they quickly do in the sub-zero temperatures. The telephone clears the track and synchronizes the stopwatches at top and bottom, and he's off in his race against Father Time. With a drop of over 2,000 feet in less than two miles, and more than two dozen sharp hairpin and zigzag curves, the problem is not speed, but control of it to negotiate the turns. The first part of the trail is almost a straight drop. Thorner is the black speck speeding down at 60 miles an hour. Snow conditions change with every turn from deep powder to sheer ice. The slightest miscalculation of these conditions can cause a dangerous plunge into the tree-lined trail. This is where the real expert accepts the hazards without breaking to save those extra precious seconds. Slow motion brings out his perfect balance and rhythm as he sweeps the curves. Sometimes he shortcuts the corners at 50 miles per hour, always dropping down and down the mountainside. out of the last turn, he's down and speeding toward the finish flag. Skiing records are only good for the day because weather conditions and snow conditions are never the same for two days. But my guess is that old daddy time took a beating right here. Thanks, Fauna. Catch your breath and we'll conclude this white rhapsody. Thank you.